Anatomy and Physiology. Okay, hey guys, this is for uh, the 106, OHP 106, and we are looking at, I can't find my mouse, there we go, we're looking at Module 5, Week 5 basically, of the classwork, and remember this isn't really in lieu of the, the Zoom, because we got Zoom working again, make sure you're checking your announcements and your emails, I'm trying to do both, and there's been a couple hiccups, and it's a real kind of a, can be kind of a pain. But uh, we're going to go through the week five stuff right now. Now, remember that like in the overview, we've got discussion, the initial post. The first post is going to have to be due on the 10th. That's February 10th, okay, or whatever. But it's it's whatever day it is. I, I usually put this out on a Sunday, try it in the morning. And then you can look at it and go through stuff on Monday, which is the week starts, and then get stuff done by Wednesday, the initial post. Now, the follow-up posts, which are two, you got to do two. And remember to make them a couple sentences that are complete sentences, and here's a hint. If you're having problems and you're like, I don't know what to put, find one of the words that they're using and try to use your vocabulary words because it's important to practice. And let's say it's talking about the cerebrum. Well, let's say the cerebrum, and then you can define it in your own words. You know, the cerebrum is different from the cerebellum because the cerebrum is the top part and the cerebellum is for balance or something like that. And that'll give you a chance to get a full credit on those. Now, some of you have been doing great jobs on the the initial post or like amazing stuff, but you're not responding to others and you miss like six points or eight points or something like that off those. Now I, I'm grading them by the rubric. So you, you get points based on each section that you do and you can check the rubric ahead of time and figure out what's going on. So case studies and stuff like that are due that next Sunday, which is going to be, I think the 14th if we're in this month here, um, lab case studies, digestive and urinary system, digestive system. Good. Urinary system. Good. Okay. I'm going next. We're going to chapter 22, chapter 23, chapter 24, and chapter 25. Electrolyte and water imbalance is a good one to go over. There's a lot of information in there. Respiratory system. So some things about the respiratory system really, really quickly. Nasopharynx, okay, is the top part. From here up, okay, it's inside there. You're going to have the concha. You're going to have the turbinates is what they're called. There's the top bottom of the top of the hard palate. And it goes all the way back to these things called the adenoids, which are part of your lymph system. Okay. The nares, nasium, nares. Okay. This thing here is called the filtrum. And then here we have the teeth, right? Teeth up or lower. And the different teeth have different names. I think we'll go over those. You're going to have the incisors. You're going to have the um, cuspids and bicuspids. The canines through here. And then in the back there you have the molars. 20 teeth in a in in um, baby that grow up and then you end up with 32 as an adult okay and uh, you know, they're, they're called deciduous when they fall out that's the oral pharynx okay as you come back you have the tongue and then you have the hard palate and soft palate back in there and then in the back we have the the lingual tonsils or the sublingual tonsils then we have the palatine tonsils or the the, the parotid salivary glands and then you have the um, uh, uh, pharyngeal tonsils in the back. Now that's the pharynx, the oral pharynx. Now the laryngopharynx is from here up. That's the upper respiratory system. Okay. The lower respiratory is below that. And we have the trachea is this thing here. Trachea is made up of the laryngeal, um, cartilage right here. Okay. And that's, that's where the voice box is. There's true vocal cords and there's false vocal cords. The true ones are the ones that make the sound. The other ones kind of just close things off. Then there's <clears throat> a thing which I just didn't close because <clears throat> there we go. That's the epiglottis. The epiglottis is a covering of the tube. Okay, you have the tube comes down and it every time you swallow, like if your mouth is this way, right? And you put food in your mouth and it goes down the esophagus, which is behind or posterior to the, the trachea. The epiglottis will come down and close that off so you don't put food and water into your windpipe. As the windpipe comes down, it's made up of these cartilage rings, Okay, and they uh, they're 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 C-shaped. Okay, and so in the back there's just a piece of muscle so that the esophagus, which is behind it, this way. Okay, can you can swallow something big and it can bubble down without pushing your whole neck out, look like an ostrich or something. And as it comes down, it goes into two parts called the main bronchi, and at that little point here is called the carina. Okay, I think we went over that for some reason before, but we're going to go over it again, and you guys get to get more of that stuff. Okay, then you go into the lobes of the lungs on the 
right side, there's going to be three lobes. On the left side, there's two because the heart's in the way. Okay, and then you have uh, secondary bronchioles and tertiary ones. And then you have the alveoli and the capillaries around that and all that fun stuff. And that's where exchange happens, okay? That's the basics of that system. Um, below that, one of the things we have to mention, too, is the diaphragm, which is a dome-shaped muscle connected in the front to the rib cage and the back on the spine. Um, it's, like I said, dome-shaped, and it moves this way and this way. As it moves down and contracts, it'll pull, help pull air in, and then it relaxes. You let air out. Um, the, it has three holes in it. It has the most posterior holes for the aorta. That's coming off the heart. And then the one right kind of like kitty corner to it on the right side more is the um, vena cava. And then right in front of that is the one for the esophagus. And that's called the hiatus. Okay, there's hiatus high is what those are called. And if you have a hiatal hernia, it's that pushing up, which I think we did that one for some reason. I'm having like a flashback of that kind of stuff. That's your, and then we get to the digestive system. So digestive system is there, okay? The digestive system shares the oropharynx and the laryngopharynx a little bit. And then we have the esophagus, which comes down and reaches into the esophageal, uh, gastroesophageal sphincter, which is a doorway into the stomach. The stomach has three parts, the fundus on the top, the body in the middle, the duodenum on the, on the bottom, or duodenum. Inside there, there's these little ridges, which are called rugae. I should probably write these, draw these out, but you can look at them in your book, and at least you have these words, rugae, R-U-G-A-E, and those help move things around, like the rugae on top of your mouth. Those are those ridges in there. And that helps you mash food with your tongue. Okay. Um, probably goes into the the taste buds and then the 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 the, the um, gustatory papillae, I guess it were. Um, glosso means tongue, also lingual. As we go down with there, we get into the stomach. The stomach then turns into the duodenum. The duodenum then has a couple connections as we pass that area, which is the the pancreas and the gallbladder. Now, the gallbladder is attached to the liver. It's a holding space for bile. Bile helps you digest fats. So whenever there's a fatty mood, food comes down, it stimulates that to squeeze, and it pushes out some of that bile, and it helps break down that stuff for you. Also helps with like a lot of acid. There's some some bicarbonate basically in there, and there's some antacids kind of stuff in there, and that's pushing it out into there because you've made a bunch of acid because you had a bunch of meat, and meat needs acid. Now, when your body's making too much acid, it also will try and make mucus, and one of the things that happens, if you're too stressed out, you won't make mucus. So I'm trying to get this really fast. Sorry, guys. Slow me down to, I don't know, 75%, and I'll talk real slow. Um, let's see. Da -da 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 -da. Oh, small intestine. So, small intestine, duodenum. Then we have jejunum, J-E-J-U-N-U-M. And then we go ileum, I-L-E-U-M. Okay, not, uh, I -L -E, not like ileum on the side of the hip. It's the ileum. Okay, and that attaches to the ileocecal valve, which is attached to the cecum, which is the lower right side of the uh, of the large intestine where you have the vermiform appendix vermiform means a uh, worm okay and then you have the ascending colon transverse colon descending colon and then a sigmoid colon and then the rectum and then the anus and then out we go and each one of those have different functions of course so look those things up now moving on to the urinary system not as many parts nice okay branches off uh, from the aorta have the renal arteries and then branches from the kidneys or the reñón if you're in Spanish they, they go back to the, the renal veins which go to the vena cava and then the kidneys are paired and there's one higher than the other and there's reasons for those we won't get into that yet um, mostly because the liver kind of pushes it down but the the kidneys uh, are filters okay they're filters they are in a capsule they're what's called retroperitoneal you should know that one by now and we've got, uh, da, 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 I can't remember what I was going to say next. Oh, so it has inside, you have the, the cortex, and then you have the medulla, and there's things called pyramids, and they're pyramid-shaped. And that's where a lot of your uh, functional stuff are. It was called the nephron, okay? And that's where a lot of filtering takes place. And then it makes little drops of urine, and that blops into what's called the pelvis and the calyces, and you end up down the ureter and into the bladder, and then the bladder has... A holding tank and has some muscle that can squeeze they call the detrusor muscle and it goes through two little sphincters to the outside and that's how you urinate so there um, very important even if you're dehydrated you'll still urinate a little bit because you got to get rid of those those acids and you got to get rid of the uric acid and urea those are those are build-up products of 
protein metabolism. That's why cats, so they eat mostly protein, they smell like ammonia because you're making ammonia to offset the acid. Uh, water and electrolyte balance. We're going to talk about how much water there is. I think I have another video on that one. I'll have to look for it for you. But keep working on that kind of stuff. Um, don't forget to get everything in. If you're turning stuff in on the... Oh, there we go. Good. Okay, so it goes through all the, everything, all the lessons here. Oh, that's not too bad. Uh, okay, discussion board. Let's talk about that one real quick. It's already a week, I mean, week, week five discussion board. Endocrine. Now, remember the, the nervous system and the endocrine system are both communication systems. They s receive information and they send out information. The nervous system receives it electrochemically, so it receives like chemical, uh, you get like sensation, whatever it is, touch or smell or something like that, stimulates a nerve to send electrical energy to a place and releases a, a neurotransmitter to another nerve, etc., all the way back. And so you have a re reception, which is sensory, and then you have integration inside the brain that makes a decision point, and then it has a motor nerve that comes out. Similar for uh, endocrine, endocrine internal, as opposed to exocrine. The glands and my salivary glands, my sweat glands, and my, my sebaceous glands are exocrine on the outside, okay? And you're saying, wait a minute, don't you have glands on here? So like, here's a weird thing. So the gland like the um, uh, gallbladder, this, no, like let's say the pancreas. Pancreas is a gland. It has two functions, endocrine and exocrine. Exocrine into the lumen, the open space of the intestine to help digest. It releases amylases and proteases and lipases and stuff like that. But on the other side of it, it's got these islets of Langerhans are called, and they release insulin into the blood. And it depends on how much sugar you have in your blood. So there's a sensory component. There's an integration component, which is usually just a level. It's like, did you meet this level? Yes, go. Okay, remember negative feedback? All about that stuff. Okay, so here, why is it advantageous for the nervous system and to be connected and interrelated? Hmm, okay, I'm pretty sure I did this one. Well, you guys got some great answers already make sure that you're answering two other people really good keep it at least two sentences so i have some meat to look at that's a really good one discussion da, 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 good done i'm happy with you what you guys are doing on those now so one of the things that are happening too here's what here's the problem so if you don't turn anything by that deadline by the end of the week sometimes it'll be set to zero and you can still do it just you gotta let me know that it was done and i'll get a little notice and then i can go back and, and redo it for you you might get a couple points off for turning things late that's part of the rubric okay um yeah writing conventions it looks like the criteria here are provide well-reasoned and complete responses to the questions posed in the case study and then the writing conventions that apply proper spelling you guys grammar oh my gosh and mechanics so that means like put capitals at the beginning capital letters right at the beginning of the sentence and periods at the end i mean that, that stuff shows up pretty quick it's five points but then that'll help you okay graded quiz let me go over that real quick let's see what we got we are going to do the zoom meeting as well i'll talk about that which is the which structure is the windpipe and what is support and and it is supported by the rings of cartilage the c-shaped rings okay and it'll oh that's pretty easy okay we talked about it we already had the answer you've got this one so some people call it trachea some people say trachea it's trachea ventilation okay it refers to the ph of okay ventilating versus respiration that's what you have to look up and you'll be able to see that one that'll give you the, the chance on those canaliculi the hepatic duct and the cystic duct hepa remember hepa means fill uh, filter right so that we're talking about we're, we're in um biliary trees okay, canaliculi okay there we go biliary tree part of the hepatic portal circulation Ooh, good two of the above are true interesting okay look up liver okay which of the following is the true is true of lipase okay ace means 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 enzymes so it breaks something down and, and, and aces are, so here's the weird part enzymes are all proteins and proteins help speed up reactions that's what they do they're called a catalyst too so they can speed up reaction to break something down like a protease breaks down a protein an amylase breaks down a starch a lipase breaks down a fat and you can go from there okay Look up some other things like cholecystokinin and maybe gastrin and ghrelin and some other fun ones like that. You'll learn a little bit about how the digestive system works. It's pretty interesting. Glomerular filtration pressure is caused by. Okay, so da -da 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 -da. 
Oh, wow. That, okay, that's there's a lot of big words in here, okay, for this one. Glomerular filtration is in the kidney. Remember, there's a thing called the glomerulus. The glomerulus is a, a little clump of capillaries that that filter out fluids, okay, for the glomerular capsule and then the the, the nephron, which is the functional unit of the, the kidney. Now, it's intrathoracic pressure is this from doing that. Pressure within the renal tubules, renal... Okay, that's that's a hint, renal kidney, right? Blood pressure, that could be a thing. Okay, so you need to look up those two. So here's one of the things that happens with these questions. There's always going to be two that you can usually, if you have some understanding of the material and understanding of the, the vocabulary, you can usually cross off two of them pretty quick. And there's always going to be two that are almost the answer. And you have to do the 50-50 thing. This gets worse as you get further in to... Uh, uh, other classes and when you take your board exams if you have those albuminuria is the most indicative of large point of urea. okay albuminuria urea look it up you can do it albumin albumin is a, a protein okay naturesis so this is a weird one okay this is hard because naturesis natrium okay and a that's sodium, okay, and K is potassium. So you need a, which is called calium in the old old terms. Why they changed it, I don't know. We changed it to uh, 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 more English, or I guess Latin based is calium and natrium and stuff like that. And weird. Which of the following is not a function of the lungs? Okay. It'll tell, oh, okay, there's some good ones. That should be pretty easy. You need to look up where aldosterone is released, and you know that'll tell you exactly what this is. Mm, albumin in water balance is going to go into water balance. So your blood proteins, uh, your albumin and your um, uh, other ones that are related to that have to do with water movement a lot of times. And electrolytes have a lot to do with water movement. Electrolytes are your potassium and magnesium and your calcium and uh, your sodium and that kind of stuff. Okay. Mmm. Turger. Tenting, that's this. So you guys, as, as caregivers, you'll be doing this kind of thing. And if it stays up like that, or it's slow, watch that. It's a little, well, that's okay. Okay? As the skin gets looser and when you get older, you can do this thing called tenting. You, know, you push it up like this. If it's slow, it means you're a little bit dehydrated, and you should be uh, uh, getting them. Oh, I just submitted the quiz. It was all zeros. I just got 0%. That was terrible. Okay, there we go. Da, 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 da. I'll give you the next. The answers <laughs> unanswered. Okay, there we go. So that's that's week five. Looks like week six is just the, the reproductive systems. That's easy. That's all entertainment anyway. Anyway, you guys, this is only seventeen minutes. Make sure you turn your things in correctly. I'm I'm going back and having to look at some of this stuff because you get two chances on the quizzes. Remember that. So go back and make sure you do it. Take notes the first time just in case you're not happy with your score. And um, you can maybe look them up and, and do a little better on them for the next time. And you don't have to take it right away. You can take it in a few minutes or an hour or whatever it is. I don't think there's a time limit on those. Now, for the discussion boards and for the case studies, make sure that you're if you're printing out that case study, that you get the thing filled out and then recopy back in some way. I do not accept JPEGs. So pictures with your phone are don't work. And I've we've said this so many times. Um, I'm trying to look at them, but many times there's shading on them and it doesn't come across very well. So let's let's work on that because yikes, it, JPEG is not acceptable. But PDF. Now you should be able to do it if you're on Google Docs or on anything. You should be able to convert it to a PDF. You need to look that up because many classes are going to make you do that. Putting in references, very good. Okay, making sure good structure, very good. Discussion boards. Some of you are putting proper salutations, which I love. I think that's really wonderful. And um, when you're putting like, hey, Miss. You know, you're responding to Miss Jones. Hey, Miss Jones, thank you so much for posting. I, I agree with you. And then you then you put two more sentences or another sentence is at least that says, you know, the 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 kidneys are are part of the urinary system and they filter out blood. And I found that exciting that you understood this part or whatever. Just so it's more meat, guys, because we need, you're going to miss like five six points each time on those, and those are easy points. You guys can really do better on those. Um, I'm going through everything, getting everything figured out. We'll have our Zoom meeting in the next week or two. Hope you guys are doing good. We will see you later. Take care and goodbye.